Okay, so our, when you have a bunch of these intuitive backgrounds, you can simply look at them and see if any images arise. So in this one, I noticed the background looked a bit like shaded trees with some water and I don't know what, but if you wanted to emphasize what you see in this work, that's when I'll get a, maybe a smaller brush. And um, I was using tubes before, but for this, I have this paint out, so I'm just gonna use this for right now. And so I'm just gonna emphasize, go back and emphasize what I think I see in it. And that's always up to you. You can use these strictly as backgrounds for writing. You can cut them into bookmarks. You can use them as part of your art journaling backgrounds. They look really nice with writing on them. But so for this one, I'm just making a horizon line. And I, so I'm just gonna kind of play in the water shadow is usually darker than what we see up there. So I'm not gonna do a lot right now to show you. I'm just showing you, you know, how you can take your intuitive painting to an intentional level. Like I'm intending now after playing around to make this into a water and like a mysterious dreamlike scene, I think. And again, I can add whatever I want to enhance what it feels like it's there in a dream already. And I'm just doing a little bit because I don't want to lose that beautiful, um, playful feel of it, the abstract. Okay. You can work as much of on it or as little. This one, maybe I could make a card out of, I would have to cut this and put it mounted on new paper because it got a little messy. The other way to go if you get um, have messy edges is intentionally put dots all the way around. So this here, this shape, I looked at it different ways. Looks like a, a sunflower that is starting to deteriorate. The leaves are coming down on itself. It reminds me of that because actually I have a sunflower that's been doing that the last couple of weeks. Well, actually it's totally deteriorated today, but it ha I watched it and it's still so beautiful. I could use that as a metaphor for something. Um, you know, something about no matter what stage of life we're in or something's in, it can still be somehow beautiful. So I might enhance these petals a little, but since they're kind of falling off and decaying, I'm not going to see the individual petals. So I might just play with that. And what else do I see here? Um, if this is the head of a sunflower, I might bring down the stem and see if I like that. I'm doing it lightly in pencil because I can change my mind still. And this doesn't have to be the colors. If I darkened this and got rid of all of this and made it look more like a sunflower head, the problem is it's just going to probably appear flat with all these colors underneath. So I'm just gonna let it be sort of an abstract sunflower with maybe an indication of a stem. And 
and maybe one of those big leaves. And I don't think green would look good right there, so I might make this stem purple. So this is a very playful technique where you can experiment. If you come up with something, you might want to use it in one of your larger paintings, or you might want to proceed and create your own style. It's such a nice way to work. Okay, so I am liking the yellow and the purple because uh, yellow and gold and purple are opposites and they're complementary and they look, they pop. So I'm going to go ahead with that. And kind of hide it a bit behind. Maybe put a few purple dots now. So... This is what I meant about if, if you have some dots that came out, say you took off your tape and you ended up working some more and you got dots on it, just add more. All these textures look nice. I'm tempted to just make this really into a, a head but of a flower, but I'm going to resist it. <laughs> I might indicate maybe a couple petals here and there. Maybe put a little purple in around the dark rim. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, this, I don't think I need this anymore, so what I might do, if, I, if it doesn't blend when I wet it, It's blending it out a little. What else can I do here? I haven't, I don't know if wax paper works, but let's see if I can get some texture with it. Saran wrap works better, I think. But I thought, well, you, you can try texture any way you want. Paper towels work great. So I can go back, I might just go back and make this part dark. Now I don't want to lose my transparency, so I'm only going to do a little bit of darkening, leave part of it see-through and playful. Okay, and I am liking a little bit of this purple in there, maybe just to indicate a little bit more where the petals are. Okay, so I need to step back and let this dry before I go too far. Please tell me I have my camera running. Okay, it is. I've done that a lot where I thought I pressed play. Okay, so yeah, I, I like it. Um, it looks like I see, you can see things in here like, oh, there's a little bird, but I'm just going to let some things look abstract. And, and I think um, I'll make this into a large card. And since I taped it crooked accidentally, I'll trim it. Put it, mount it, and then decide if I want to have writing on the card or inside. When it's your own, you can do it any way you want. For this one, since it has a nice texture there, I think I'll write on the inside. Um, I'll show you some examples with writing on the paper. And also the white gel pen is fun for highlights. I gotta find a spot that's not wet. Maybe the vein. Hmm. 
Hmm, that might be too much, but I can play with it. Blend it in a bit. I didn't know if that really blended or not. I've never wet this before. Eh, it looks okay. Yeah. So this would be a very, a very nice card when I get done with it. Okay, that's it.